and YouTube. Um, if you know of anyone that would be blessed by the broadcast tonight, go ahead and share. Um, tell them about it. Go ahead, tag them. And uh, like I said, we're going to be talking about your bright future ahead. We're going to be talking about the awesome purpose and plan that the Lord has for you. And so um, we're going to be looking at the word of God tonight. We're also going to be um, having a time to pray, pray for anyone that needs prayer. So if you need prayer, go ahead and um, let me know. Go ahead and message me there in the comments. Um, feel free to um, comment along tonight on the broadcast and um, I'll do my best to make sure I respond. Um, I am kind of like my own um, sound person, broadcasting person as well, you know, so I have to kind of juggle a couple of things, um, but I'm getting better at it. So it, it's been good. So how has your week been? It's Thursday. I know it's, it's, it's almost the end of the week or almost the weekend. Um, I did just get back from a trip from, from Illinois. Uh, I went to a wedding, uh, for a good friend of mine, um, Violet, she was like a daughter to me while I was in the air force and so happy for her. She married, um, she married, um, a great man of God that is also serving in the air force as well. Um, so they're in Hawaii now. They actually, I think they got there yesterday, so they should be, um, in Hawaii on their honeymoon. So exciting. I think they went to Oahu, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But you can check out my Facebook page and look at those beautiful pictures. It's pretty cool because my friend Violet's from Kenya and uh, her family would make it. Not everyone got a visa, but the ones that were able to get it were there. And it was so cool to just see uh, the traditions that they have. Uh, when Violet was walking down the aisle, they had all these beautiful, like different colored quilts out and um, they laid them on the ground. And so when everyone walked out, um, you know, when they, when before the bride and, and the, well, before the bride came out with her parents, um, they all got to walk out and um, they all walked on it. So it was really cool. Um, I was very blessed to be able to go with my son and be a part of that. And it, the Holy spirit was really there. I mean, it was such like, you can feel the presence of God there. You know, when you get married, you're not just signing a contract. And that was one of the things that, that pastor Ryan, um, the, the officiant said he, he was also my pastor when I was living in Illinois. Um, but he said, it's not just a contract and it's not, you know, it's, it's a, um, it's a coming together, of uh, you know, becoming one man and woman and it's before God. And it's something that is, a, you know, it's a spiritual thing. So once, once you are brought together with your spouse, the Bible says, let no man, um, tear it apart. And so praise God, we're believing God for a long time amazing marriage for the two of them. So I'm sure they'll be having babies quickly too. So, but yeah, so it was really good. It was, it was a good trip. Um, I want to begin by, um, by getting all of you to think about where the Lord's brought you out of. Okay. So that's kind of was like the focus of tonight's message and it's remembering where God brought you out of, you know, when I was in Illinois and I can't believe it was only five years ago, but five years ago is when I left Illinois, retired from the air force and came to Tampa to go to Bible school. And, you know, five years is really just a blink of an eye, right? When you think back, especially those of us that are like me in your forties or maybe older, um, it, it goes by quickly. And so just thinking about five years, it got me thinking about, wow, how amazing what, what the Lord's done in such a short amount of time. And when you're a believer, that is how it works. That is how it works. He is going to increase you quickly. He's going to bring blessing quickly. He's going to answer your prayers. And, um, 
you know, so my prayer for you is that by this time next year, that you will be uh, shocked to see what the Lord has done in your life. Um, so again, if you have anything you want to pray about tonight, we can definitely do that. I'll also have a time uh, for people that don't know Jesus will have the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So let's go ahead and jump into it, guys. Um, I do want to start out in prayer and then we'll go right into um, the book of Jeremiah chapter 29. So Father, I just thank you for tonight. I thank you for those that are drawn to the broadcast. Thank you for those that are on for the first time. And I just ask Lord that by your Holy Spirit, that you would anoint my lips uh, tonight and only the words that you have for me to speak, that they would go forth Lord and I thank you, Lord, that your word uh, never returns void and that there's always fruit to come of it. So I thank you, Lord, that they'll be, it'll be a great encouragement tonight, uh, that it will um, it'll it'll bring forth exactly uh, the purpose that you have for your word to bring. And so we thank you so much, Lord. We glorify you tonight. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So let's go to Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, and I'm going to read from the new living translation and it says for i know the plans i have for you says the lord they are good and not a disaster to give you a future and a hope in those days when you pray i will listen if you look for me wholeheartedly you will find me now this is one of those scriptures that that's our foundation scripture for tonight but this is one of those uh scriptures that um absolutely changed my life. So back in, I believe it was 2000 or 2001, you know, I was really lost. I had just come into the military. I was going through, um, uh, a bad breakup. Um, just dealing with knowing like who I was and where I was going. And when this year was preached, something happened. Like we know that the word is living, breathing. It's alive. Right. So his word, the word of God, when when it's spoken, life will come from it. So um, so that is um, what's so amazing about his word. And I noticed that um, <laughs> this one scripture while I was in uh, sitting in service uh, every once in a while, like I, I would hear it and it would do something. It, it would it would it would get me excited about life because it says here that he has a hope and a future for you. It's not for disaster, but it's for good, not for evil. And it just affected me so much. It, and, and remember, we're talking about where God's brought you from. Where has he brought you from? What has he brought you out of? Me personally, he's brought me out of um, bad relationships and, um, you know, heartbreak and divorce. And he's brought me out of, um, you know, being addicted to drugs and alcohol and partying and all kinds of things that brought no good. And, you know, it is really, truly a miracle, guys, that I am even able to sit here and speak to you tonight. And I want to give God all the glory for what he's done in my life. You know, sometimes there's things that come like um, that want to bring disappointment and want to discourage us, right? You know, we're, we're, we're human. We're all, um, you know, we all feel those things sometimes, but I know how important it is. And I want you guys to know too, how important it is that we're, that we're in the word and we allow the word to wash us clean and, and bring the encouragement that we need so that we have a bright future ahead. And so the word is there for us. We just have to grab a hold of it, right? We just have to know it and, and, speak it over our lives and know that it's true for us. So what are you believing God for? What do you believe in God for? And, and, and I talk about this every time and it's so important that we always remember what there's so many great things that he has in store for us. And even if we can't even like picture it or, um, you know, we have, we have the promises in his word. I, I love that the word of God says, um, that his promises are yes and amen. And that's just really plain and simple. That is what it is. His word, his promises that are in his word are yes and amen. That means they're going to come to pass. So if you have a family member that's not saved yet, they're going to get saved. Um, if you have sickness in your body, you're going to be healed. If you're dealing with discouragement or depression or 
maybe you're just feeling down about something you're you're going to get that encouragement as long as you seek him and seek him with all your heart and um you know resist the enemy like i, I believe i said last broadcast how important it is to re to resist the devil and he will flee he has to flee he has no, no jurisdiction he has no rights to touch you and um you know it's so powerful to understand that us as believers that once we were saved our past was totally gone so that means that there's no you're not going to get to heaven and there's going to be like a whole uh video wall uh, movie playing about your life it's not because that's done all all, all that all that sin life that past life is gone how encouraging is that you know the enemy wants to keep reminding us of the stupid stuff that we've done and and that's happened to me recently you know the enemy wants to bring up the past and remind you of the things that have not come yet so let me encourage you tonight how important it is to understand that you have a bright future you have great things ahead and it's because your father he loves you your father in heaven and loves you and like jeremiah 29 11 says he has great plans for you for good and not for evil amen it is always awesome to contemplate the nature of God. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the nature of God. So we know that he's omnipotent. He's omnipresent, right? He's everywhere all at the same time. And um, he's eternally omniscient. So he, you know, he's all knowing, all powerful. That's God. And there's many things that he thinks of. Okay. So we look, we, we just heard for I know the plans in the beginning of that scripture in verse 11 for i know the plans well what does it mean when god says i know well it means that he thinks of you that he he knows things that are to come he knows the beginning from the end and did you know that he even knows how many hairs that you have on your head that your hairs on your head are numbered and he knows how many there is that's what the word of god says and just just think about that for a minute that's amazing and so, so that's just a picture of how much um he knows about you um the next point i have here is that there are times in our lives when we're prone to think that god has forgotten us have you ever felt that way have you ever felt that god has forgotten you uh we'll we'll know that he sees the beginning from the end. He knows that there's great things to come. We just have to be steadfast. We have to continue. Don't focus on the negative. Don't focus on what's not happening and just continue to thank the Lord for the good that he's already done and thank him for the good that he's going to do. Um, a couple things here to remember is don't listen to false prophets, okay? Because that's just going to discourage you. So make sure that whoever you're listening to, that they are um, that they are preaching the full gospel of the word of God, okay? So um, it's very important that who, whoever you're listening to is preaching the full gospel because there is false doctrine out there and the Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you. Um, so just make sure that whatever church you're going to or the services that you're listening to, make sure that it, they're preaching the full gospel. So, you know, that's understanding that, um, you know, we believe that there's, you know, a, a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that the Holy Ghost came right? After Jesus died on the cross for our sins, right? And that we don't have to live. You don't have to live every day um, as a sinner. You're not a sinner anymore. When you received Christ, you were redeemed. All that redemption came when Jesus took on all, all the weight of that sin and all the burden of, of that sickness, that shame, that guilt, whatever it might be. He took all that sin on himself. So my question to you is, are you living every day knowing that you're free, that you're redeemed? Are, are you are you living every day knowing that? And if you are, I want you to type in the comments, I have been redeemed. Go ahead and, and say it out loud. Say, I have been redeemed. That's right. You've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Amen. And so when he shed that blood, it was for all sickness, all disease, all shame, all guilt. 
Um, also, make sure, guys, you're not listening to the enemy. He He's going to, like I said before, he's going to continue to lie to you. He doesn't want you to have a big future, a bright future. He doesn't want you to live in health and prosperity. He doesn't want your um, family to, to be um, walking in um, unity. And he doesn't want your family, like he, you know, we know that John 10, 10 says that, that he's come to steal, kill and destroy. Well, that's what he wants to do to your family. That's what he wants to do to your life. So don't let him. And if you're, if you're noticing that, you know, something's going on in it, you know, it's not from God. Well, you better make sure that you're in the word. You better make sure that you're in the word of God, because that's where the power comes from. That's where the power comes from. And, and what will happen is um, the Holy Spirit that, that's living inside of you, right? You know, the, the Jesus, when, when, um, when he was baptized, when he was baptized in the Jordan River, that power came on him. And so that same power that was in Christ Jesus, when he walked on this earth, before he left this earth is inside of you and me. So that same power will help you to be an overcomer. It will comfort you. It will strengthen you. It will give you everything that you need. Amen. So make sure you're not listening to the enemy. And every time there's a thought that you know is not from God, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, then you know it's from the enemy. And then there is a scripture that you can use to fight against that word. And if you don't, if you don't feel like it's something that you're able to overcome easily, then what you need to do is you need to fight it by speaking it out. And I'll give you an example of that. So say, say I was dealing with, um, I don't know, thoughts of thought, I don't know, bad thoughts about somebody that I would say, I would say, you know, the word of God, God says um, that we're only to, you know, speak, you know, good things and kind things. And I would say, you know, say that out loud or um, even just saying that you're, you're, you've been you know, redeemed and over and you overcome, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And so that we can combat those things. And um, oh, that would you have the mind of Christ. Of course, that's that's the best one. You have the mind of Christ and um, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Right. So those are the scriptures that you'll want to, you'll want to grab. There's a lot in the book of uh, Proverbs. So, um, so yeah, check it out, Google it if you have to and, and fight against whatever it is the enemy's trying to come against you with. Another point here is to remember to know that God is thinking of you. He is thinking of uh, God, God was thinking of the captives in Babylon during captivity. They may not have all, all thought that, but he was. And, um, and what's important to, to know about that is that God doesn't just think of you just part of the time. He's always thinking about you. He, he's always thinking about, and, and, and it's us, it's us in our, in our, um, our fleshly nature that is not going, you know, know doesn't want to accept those things like we let the things of the world um you know the 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 lust of the eyes the the pride of life and all these things that try to come against us and we we make that bigger than god is in our lives so we have to make sure that we're putting him first and that we're thinking on the good things and what he has for us um so what exactly does god think of us so what does he think of you well it really all depends on our relationship with him. So first and foremost, if you're a child of God, um, then he's not thinking you're a fool, <laughs> but you know, if it, you know what I'm saying? Like there, there are some that he, you know, the Lord will say, Oh fool, you know, if you're doing foolish things and um, you know, but as a child of God, he is going to think, um, about you as his child and protecting you and doing everything that he can to make sure, um, you know, that he, he leads you and guides you towards the truth and not away from the truth. And, and we know that the word says that there's, he always makes a way out. So if there's something going on, he's always going to make a way out for us. Um, and, and if I am his child, right? So if you are his child, his thoughts are of peace 
and not evil. So that means he's not beating you over the head when you make a mistake. That's that's religion says that, you know, you're going to get beat up and you're going to be punished and God's going to punish you. That's not how it works. You know, he's give, God's given everything, all things to us as his children. He's given it to us. He already did everything he was ever going to do on the cross when he sent his only son to die for us. And once that happened, he then gave all power to us, all power that's needed to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, to, um, you know, pray for someone to be delivered. Um, to see someone delivered from addiction, to see someone delivered from uh, depression or suicidal thoughts, whatever it may be. So he's given all of that power to us. And remember, Jesus said that when he was leaving, that he was going to have um, someone, a comforter come um, to be with us. And the disciples, they didn't know what that meant. <laughs> they waited and waited and waited and when it came they weren't prepared <laughs> they were like wow this this is what he was talking about you know and and what happened in the upper room we know from the book of acts right guys um we know that his power came and when his power came it overtook them and that that's how the um you know the power of the holy ghost came they were speaking in other tongues and that was the evidence that was the evidence that they had been filled with the holy spirit because the holy spirit had to come after jesus left this earth so so again if we're a child we're his child then we must know and remember that his thoughts for us are of peace and not for evil um, so you shouldn't have any fear. You shouldn't be walking in fear um, because that's that's not his best for you. That's not what he has for you as a child of God. So God is always thinking of the expected end. So he knows the end from the beginning. And he and I love that um, in Jeremiah because he says that he knows that there is an expected end. He knows what that looks like. And it he can can see disaster that lies ahead. That's why there's so many principles in the word of God to protect us from disaster. Because the enemy wants to come and 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 destroy things, kill, kill, you know, just do whatever he can to wreak havoc in our lives. But if we stand firm against it, um, then you know we can be protected. I I know that um the other day I was driving and um I was just making a right turn like I do every morning onto the same road that I always turn on. And those of you in Tampa know Falkenberg. I was turning onto Falkenberg and this car like flew from out of nowhere. And I, oh my gosh, if I didn't have another piece of the road, the side of the road to move over on, he would have, he would have hit me like slammed right into the back of me. I was like, oh my gosh. But immediately I began to thank God and I knew that he protected me because in the Malachi, it says that we are to give all the tithes to the Lord, right? We to give the 10th, everything that comes in. We're not just giving because it's a commandment to tithe and to give back to the Lord, but we're giving because it is going to bring protection. And, um, you know, Malachi three says that he will, uh, he will, he'll stop the devourer for our sake. He'll protect us. Even, even my pastor, Pastor Rodney, he, um, he, oh my gosh, he like got into an accident and he, him and the driver were not harmed at all. And then there was another day, um, that he was driving and he fell asleep at the wheel and, you know, God protected him, God protected him. And that, and that is, that is what he's going to do. We just have to do our part. We have to know that um, we're living right. We have to be free from sin. We need to make sure because if we, we're living in sin, we're, we're separated from God and his hands are tied at that point. And um, of course, there still is um, the mercy of God, but he is going to protect us from all evil things. Hey, Tristan. Um. So God always has the end result in view. So he's always looking at the end result. So if the Lord speaks to you to do 
something, it's for a reason. You know, if he's telling you to, to call someone, if he puts someone on your heart and he wants you to call them to be a blessing to them, or maybe he 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 tells you to bless a minister or a friend with a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or whatever it may be that, you know, the Lord will impress upon you a, a specific number um, and let you know you do, what, what he has for you to do because he has a blessing in mind for you. Um, so it's all about being able to hear the voice of God. And um, we know how to do that, right? That we do that through the word. We do that by uh, reading his word because as we read his word, then we get to know who he is and also being in the presence of the Lord as well. So when we're, when we're um, in prayer, when we're um, worshiping the Lord, then, um, then we'll be able to hear his voice. <laughs> man doesn't consider the expected end so and and what this means is that when man when when man is living in sin they're not thinking about the end they're not thinking about they're so they're if they're in doing drugs they're thinking about that satisfaction that they're getting at that moment from doing that drug or they're drinking alcohol or, um, you know, having an affair, whatever it is, it's always a temporary satisfaction, but they're not thinking about the, you know, the expected end. And that's what the Lord's talking about here in Jeremiah 29, 11 is he has great plans for us. He has an awesome, bright future planned for you. And then we just make sure that we are um, doing things that are pleasing the Lord and we are, you know, following after, um, his principles and commands that he has for us. And God always thinks about the end. He's always thinking about the end. That's why when he's telling you not to do something, whether he's telling you to do something or not to do something, it's because he has um, an end in, in my view. Um, you know, the path may seem straight and narrow, but at the end is going to be eternal glory. So, you know, you'll have some Christians that are just like, I don't want to walk that straight and narrow path. That's boring. Well, um, it's not boring when you leave this earth and, <laughs> you know, you're you're walking on streets of gold and you can live in eternal joy free from suffering and pain. But we all know what the opposite of that would be. <laughs> the opposite of that would be to go to hell. So, of course that's not for you. Amen. Um, and then, you know, you may walk the path of suffering, but at the end is eternal joy. So there may be times that, um, you know, there might be some suffering that you encounter, but, you know, and, and, you know, some people, not, not that we have to, you know, expect this to happen as we get older. Um, you know, some people do get Alzheimer's, some people do get sicknesses and, and deal with suffering at the end of their life. But hey, guess what? You don't have to endure that. You don't have to. Um, but even if there was that sort of suffering, the excitement at the end of your life when you're a believer is that you will go into eternity and you'll be free from all pain and all sickness and disease. You may deny it yourself and take up your take up your cross to follow god um the end is a crown of righteousness his kingdom i encourage you if you haven't um ever studied what happens after jesus comes back um study the second coming studying study the millennial reign of christ study um what happened you know the the seven feasts and then and then the millennia reign of Christ and and how we we do um, rule and reign with Him. So so yeah, of course we know as believers we will be a part of His kingdom and um, we will get that crown of righteousness as as soul winners, right? As you know, sharing Christ with others while we're here on the earth, and that's our eternal reward. But there's more than that. There's there's more to his kingdom than that. And so I encourage you to, to study that out if you've never studied that before. Uh, but a couple of scriptures that um, that relate to Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13 is uh, the first one is Job 23, 13. 
that says, but once he has made his decision, who can change his mind? Whatever he wants to do, he does. <laughs> so he, he will do to me whatever he has planned. He controls my destiny. Uh, that's just one of many. I'll, I'll read a couple more. They're so good. Uh, Psalm 33, one, 11, 33, 11 says, but the Lord's plans stand firm forever. His intentions can never be shaken. And then my favorite is Isaiah 55, 8 through 12. So that's the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 8 through 12 says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. It doesn't get more plain than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My thoughts are not like your thoughts. So when you're thinking negative things, you know, it's not his thoughts for you. It's not his thoughts for me. Um, he says, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. The rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to and it will prosper everywhere I send it. You will live in joy and peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song and the trees of the field will clap their hands. Where once there were thorns, cypress trees will grow. Where, where nettles grew, myrtles will sprout up. These events will bring great honor to the Lord's name. They will be an everlasting sign of his power and love. So this is so awesome to really think, if, you know, you know how you look up at the, um, the sky and you see all these stars and you're thinking, oh my gosh, how far does it go? Well, that's kind of like how I view this scripture when he says, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. And it really kind of just puts you in check to be like, my gosh, what was the stuff that I was just thinking about? Because whatever I was worried about, he's not worried about, you know? And so we have to remember that, um, that he has great plans for us, that even, even when we, I, I'm a planner, I'm an organizer, I make lists. I don't know who else does that, but I make lists. I have to like plan everything out. You should see me when I'm doing my budget and my bills. But when it comes to our life and the future that he has for us, we can write everything down that we want and we can believe, believe him for, you know, that of course we can do that. But still that doesn't negate the fact that he has like his thoughts are not like our thoughts. So e imagine the greatest, the greatest answer to prayer you could ever have. So think about the greatest answer to prayer you can ever have. So what, what do you believe in God for? And he gives you that. And so what God wants to do is he wants to far exceed your expectations. And I really have to say that I did experience that. And my son is here with me. He can agree that um, the power and presence of God, right? Tristan, was so powerful at Violet's wedding. Like yeah. it wasn't just like any wedding because both the bride and the groom knew that they weren't just signing a contract and just getting married. Like they were coming before God and they, they believed what the word of God said that, you know, two lives will come together and be one. And I love how they're both their parents were both like, like you know, we give you away at one point. Um, Violet's dad said um when when violet comes home she's a visitor now obviously she, you know she's still his daughter but um it it was it was just awesome to like hear them say that because they were acknowledging what the word says when you leave your father and mother and you join you know and you are joined with your spouse um but but really going back to you know his his thoughts are nothing like your thoughts i remember Five years ago, when Violet was believing God for her husband, and she would tell me over the years that, you know, her and her friend would write everything down and what they were believing God for. And it was just so awesome to see that God far exceeded her expectations. I mean, the the joy on her face was like, I don't even know how to explain it. It was just, 
the glory of God was just all over both of them. It was just, it was really beautiful. Um, and so that's what God wants to do to, for you, whatever it is that you're believing him for. And, you know, nothing is too small, right? So whatever it is that you care about, he cares about. And um, thanks, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel says, I'm praying your husband in. Yes, I think I need to pray twice a day, Rachel. Twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> twice a day um but yeah he's going to um far exceed our expectations so even what we we think it's going to look like he's going to do even more than that um but i'm just so i just want to you know give god all the glory and thanks for all he's done in my life i mean i'm still believing god obviously for a husband i'm still believing him for big things um, but I have to think on, and I want to encourage you guys to do the same, is um, I want you to remember that he's done so much for you already. So where, guy, guys, where has he brought you out of? You know, just, just take a minute to think about that. And just the goodness of God will, will flood you. It, it will just totally overwhelm you because he did that. No man did that. We didn't do that. He brought the change, right? And, um, you know, I just want to give God all the glory for that and and honor him because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even be here right now. You know, if it wasn't, and that goes back to what I was saying about this past weekend being in Illinois, just, just reminded me of where I don't belong, <laughs> You know, it's like God called me to Tampa, that this is where I belong. Now, it's nice to visit. There's nothing wrong with visiting. Um, but can I tell them about Matthew? What do you mean? Um, how you experienced. Yeah. Okay, so so Tristan, Tristan got to see his friend that he hadn't seen in five years. And um, we went to go see a play that he was in because he he does like acting plays and stuff like that. Well, anyways, um, afterwards, he went over to his friend Matthew's house. And when he came back to when I picked him up later that night and we got back to our um, the TLF, which is like a hotel. What he said to me was that. He said, I need to listen to uh, scriptures tonight. I need to listen to scriptures to go to bed tonight. And I said, well, why? And he said, because I felt the sin in Matthew's house. So, you know, and, and that was like, that must have been an eye opener for him because, you know, as we are here, and we're where God's called us to be. And then when you go out and you experience what you're where you're not supposed to be, it's very clear, right? And then of course you can always, you know, feel that weight of sin or um, you know, feel feel that disconnect because obviously they're not where Tristan is spiritually. Um, but um, but yeah, it was encouraging to see how um how Tristan recognized that and how he knew. Um, and, and at a young age too, 19 years old to know that, Hey, I need to put some scripture on. I need to get, you know, in the Holy ghost and in the anointing so that I don't, you know, have to have this, this sin feeling <laughs> overcome. Right, Tristan. Mm -hmm. And so, so it was an experience for sure. I mean, um, I'm sure his friend experienced it the opposite way. Right. He probably was like, you know there's something very different about my friend Tristan. I mean, it's undeniable um, just in the speech, right? Because he was yeah. throwing F-bombs around and, you know, just not talking the way that Tristan does. And um, But Tristan just loved on him and was a friend to him and didn't, you know, wasn't judgy. <laughs> um, but yeah. So anyway, so that was truly an experience. But what I got... Um, ultimately from the whole weekend was that it's such a great place to know that you're where God has you to be. And I, we know without a shadow of a doubt that we belong at the river, you know, may, maybe someday the Lord will call us to another place, another church. But for right now, this is where he has us planted. This is where he, you know, 
And this is all part of that, the bright future that we're talking about. The bright future ahead is, is taking these steps now to know that we are where he wants us to be and obeying him to do that. So if, if, if we were to move back to Illinois, we would, we would be in obvious disobedience. So if you move back there to Illinois because you like the weather, <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're in disobedience, you know? Um, so, but yeah, so it's, it, it was encouraging. It was encouraging. Um, it was a little, little disheartening at times to experience those things, but you know, in the end, the Lord is like, you know, I got you, you're right where you're supposed to be. Um, and he, he had, he knows what our future looks like. So, um, so we're just going to continue, right? We're just going to continue to serve the Lord, to do exactly what he tells us to do. Um, you know, when he tells you to bless someone financially, bless them. If he tells you to go somewhere and, 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 and do an outreach or, um, you know, take a trip somewhere to be a blessing to a family member or whatever it may be, then you go. But make sure, be 100% sure that the Lord's told you to go. Because if not, you will, you will know, you will feel it um, if you're out of the will of God uh, when it comes to that. And sometimes, sometimes, you know, I hear ministers say all the time that they've missed it. You know, they thought, and, and, and that's part of learning to hear the voice of God as well. But let's, all right, so let's recap. So we looked at Jeremiah 29, 11, uh, through 13, um, that said, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, they're good for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope in those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. So be encouraged today to know that, um, that he has that that amazing future in mind for you, that um, we'll just continue to seek him, read his word, um, serve him. Know that we got to know and be confident and come boldly before the throne that when we pray that he hears us, we have to know that. Don't let the enemy lie to you and, and tell you that he don't hear you because he does. Um, I mean, if I could get my manager fired, then... Uh, Anything's possible, right? Bad. <laughs> she well, she got fired from <laughs> being my boss. <laughs> but um, but no, really, you know, he 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 hears the prayers of the righteous. So um, so amen. So does anybody have any um anything you want to pray about? Um, maybe something that you're believing God for personally, so we can all like agree together. Um Tristan, you have anything? No. My neighbors are yelling upstairs. That's all they do is yell and stomp and do laundry at two in the morning. <laughs> well, praise God. So, um, so what I want to do at this time is first I'm going to pray pray a blessing over everybody. And then I'm going to um, give opportunity for those that hear this uh, message and don't know Jesus to receive him as their Lord and Savior. So um, Father, I just ask that you bless every single person that's watched the broadcast, Lord. Um, Father, I thank you for your word that went forth. And I just pray that it was an encouragement to each one of them. Um, thank you, Lord, that you have an awesome, bright future for every single person um, that is your child. And um, and Lord, it's going to be, we know that it's going to be bigger and better than we, we could ever imagine. So thank you. Um, and Lord, if there's anyone that watches the broadcast that has been um, just lately or feeling depressed or, um, you know, just feeling off father i just ask that you'll come right now by your presence and um you'll just begin to comfort them and fill them with your anointing lord and and just show them that um that you have an awesome amazing future for them and 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 remind them of how much that you love them that you continue to walk with them lord and we will um we will do our best to always remember to give you 
the honor and glory and be grateful be grateful for all you've done in our lives lord we thank you so much thank you for blessing everyone that's watched this broadcast tonight lord and and um if there's anyone that's on the broadcast that doesn't know you personally or doesn't know Jesus uh, personally, um, I want you to um, I want you to take the time right now and to make that decision. Um, the decision to serve the Lord is going to be the most important decision that you'll ever make in your life. And um, you know, maybe you have um, served the Lord before and and you you fell away and maybe something happened in your life and maybe you once were on fire for god and and something happened maybe there was a divorce or loss of a child or loss of a loved one or a job or, um maybe you are just not sure of your salvation and you want to make sure tonight and um maybe you've just never known Jesus and never knew how to receive Jesus. So I'm going to give you that opportunity tonight. Um, so if you could just lift your hands where you're at right now and just pray this prayer with me, say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me and cleanse me. Set me free. And Jesus, I thank you that you died for me. I believe you're risen from the dead and you're coming back again for me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost, a hunger for the things of God, and a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Say I'm saved, I'm born again, and I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. So my friend, if you said that prayer tonight, Know that all of your sins are forgiven. Always remember to run to God and not from him because he loves you. And just like I said tonight in tonight's teaching, he has an awesome, awesome plan for your life with a bright, bright future ahead. Um, so let us know in the comments um, if you said that prayer. We definitely want to um, celebrate with you, welcome you to the family of God. And I will send you... Um, I will send you some material that will get you started. Uh, of course, you want to make sure that you find a uh, gospel Bible believing church. And also um, you can start reading the gospels. That's a good place to start. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, so I want to thank everyone that was on the broadcast. Um, before, before you leave, if you, you could go ahead and share the broadcast, maybe um, send it to a couple people. Um, personally by messenger that's usually the best way to do it um but yeah that i would um you know great, greatly appreciate it the most important thing is we get the word out and encourage people that that is ultimately my goal um i know that's why the lord told me to start this broadcast so i pray it's a blessing to people and uh, people will receive jesus if they haven't already so love you guys thank you to everyone that was on and until next Thursday, have a great weekend. Make sure you're in church on Sunday and I'll see you later.